Hello trail travelers. Today we are in Arches National Park just outside of Moab, Utah and we're going to check out two trails today. Tower Arch and Eye of the Whale. So to get started you're going to go um, a handful of miles into Arches National Park and we're turning on to Salt Valley Road and you can see it is an unpaved road here in the park. Now, this is, even though it's a four by four road, it is, as you can see, it's slightly below the, uh, a paved road. It's a nice, smooth, graded gravel road. You should be able to pretty much take any vehicle on here, but we're gonna take this down to Tower, uh, Tower Arch, and that's when uh, things could get a little interesting. So, can't wait to see what this is like off-roading in Arches National Park. Now, what you're seeing on the video here is still footage from Salt Valley Road. We actually take this for almost 10 miles before we get to the turn to go to Tower Arch. Now, before we even hit the dirt road, we aired down to about 15 PSI because there's quite a bit of washboard and it's certainly made for a much more comfortable ride. But once we get on Tower Arch Road, then we're going to get into some fun stuff, we think. But right now, we're just enjoying this beautiful desert scenery. Okay, now we've kind of come up out of this little valley section and we're up at kind of the normal grade level. And now we can see, even off to the right hand side, there's a nice tower or a nice arch over there. And we see some of the more classic red rocky stuff from Arches National Park. And on our left, we have like these painted hills that are absolutely gorgeous. So now we can kind of see that we're in the park versus just kind of down in that valley where we couldn't see anything. So this is really interesting. Just a another perspective of the park and like I said kind of a cool arch over there in the distance might not be able to pick it up on the camera but it's certainly an eyeful right now Bye. okay we are now making a left here at the seven mile mark for tower arch and this is going to take us to well a more difficult trail with an arch of some kind so we're looking forward to uh, seeing what this trail is all about. Uh, in about 0.9 miles, we'll have a little climb and uh, we'll go from there. But I'm looking forward to this. Road may be impassable, deep sand ahead. Well, there's a stark warning for you. Well, I wouldn't say this is deep sand right now. Um, I'm sure there's times where the sand can be pretty deep and there is nothing to self recover off of. So this could, uh, yeah, if, if this was really deep and you got out here by yourself and you weren't being careful, this could be kind of a problem for you. But what I'm seeing ahead is uh, kind of a lack of a trail here. It just goes right up this mountain. You think that is a trail? I, I don't know. I hope it is not. It doesn't look like a trail even. I don't know, but I'm going to go into four low just because of all this sand and stuff, just to be on the safe side. Okay, we have our first obstacle here. And we're just going to come up on it nice and slow. We'll just ease into it. Get our feet wet this morning. Kind of a nice little hill climb right there. Going into another little rock climb. And then it mellows out. 
Okay, kind of a fun little obstacle there. Kind of enjoyed that. Well, this is uh, right into another fun little rock climbing obstacle here. I think the next time we bring some, you know, we're with some friends that we know that don't really appreciate the scenic views as much as we do, we're gonna bring them here and just kind of surprise them with a fun little bit of off-roading. Because if it stays like this, this is a fun trail. I mean, right now it's, it's not too difficult, but it just gives you enough. Technical enough? Yeah, just enough technical to uh, make it really fun. I mean, these are, for us, these are super fun trails because you have to pick some lines. You, you might need to do a little spotting here and there just to pick the perfect line. And sometimes you can make them harder or easier depending on what you're into. And now as we make this turn right here, I mean, look at the view. So we have a little bit of off-roading fun <laughs> with, uh, with a killer view. This is gonna be an awesome day. Now we come up over this hill and there's this big rock formation right here. Very cool. Now we might be joined. Uh, there was a, another vehicle coming up behind us. We don't know if they're going to see the first obstacle and turn around or not, or if they're going to catch up to us at some point. But sometimes the more the merrier. But this is definitely, you know, we're only a few minutes in. And this is a fun trail that has some, some awesome sights to it. So... And yeah, I'm so glad we decided to do this today. No trailer today, it's parked somewhere. So when we're done, we'll go back and get it and this will be our last day in the area. And we'll start heading home, but what a fantastic trip. Uh, if you haven't watched the video about White Rim Trail, that is, that's a video you've got to see. That was an amazing trip. All right, we've got some little rock ledges here. We'll give these a nice little climb. Sometimes it's just nice to, even though this is a little bit technical, it's still a fairly easy trail, at least so far. And sometimes these trails are just a lot of fun to just get out on and flex out your vehicle a little bit get a little tippy here and there and just have some fun we're gonna go run into this other one which seems fairly steep we're just gonna try and keep a little bit of momentum going I'm in manual one and four low just so I don't have to worry about getting too much speed going or having to hit the brakes because I got going too fast but we'll just kind of crawl right up this now, I don't want to have a lot of speed coming in when I hit these little ledges but I want just enough that the tires kind of roll over them instead of stopping and then trying to get some momentum or hitting them too fast and either coming to a dead stop or, or bouncing. I want just enough momentum that the tires roll over them so that I don't stop and it just helps keep that climb speed at a really nice pace. Okay, I'm gonna have to get out here and see where this trail goes.
Okay, we just have this little descent here. I'm just gonna keep it in manual one. So we just cruise down, uh, but mostly because we're taking in the sights around here. The view here is absolutely amazing. We got towers and vistas and buttes and hills and just all kinds of awesome scenery right here. So we're just gonna take our time going down this and really, really take this in. Okay, we've got a little downhill right here. These little drop-offs. Now, if you're if you're new, one of the big things about these sharp drop-offs to watch for is how fast you come off of them with your tires. Because if you come off too fast, your your whole vehicle is going to bounce on its springs, and that's when you're going to hit the bottom of the vehicle, and then when your back tires come down that's when you're gonna smack your rear bumper and many a stock bumper has been lost due to coming off rocks too quick and smacking down and tearing the license plate holder off so when you feel that you're coming down you want to come really slow off those rocks so that you don't fall off you want to roll off you don't want to fall off and then end up smacking your bumper Okay, we're going to just kind of keep cruising up here. Looks like a nice little rocky downhill that we've got to traverse. And this looks like it's going to be all about picking the right line because if you get a tire in one of these ruts, you could have a bad day. Okay, we're going to start going down. We got out of our, out of the way of a tour vehicle that was coming up. And we're gonna, actually Katarina's down there spotting and filming at the same time. Okay, coming down. Now we, we pulled over to let a, a tour vehicle go by and the the people that were were in that, uh, they looked a little terrified. <laughs> Just to be honest, they uh, they didn't look like they were having too good of a time because they had just come up some of this pretty steep stuff. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it was some. It was an older couple and stuff, so they uh, probably weren't sure what they were they were in for. But at least they're almost through. Uh, if this was getting to be a bit much for them. Oh, well, this is kind of fun. A little 20 degree angle coming down these rocks. Next section doesn't look too bad. We'll get resettled there. Now often I'm poking my head out the driver window just to kind of see where my, my driver tire is and see where the rock drop off goes. But once you know it's there, you can feel it. You'll feel your vehicle start to come over the edge and then you can get on some brake, take it over nice and slow, and avoid that bouncing that I'm, and, or the dropping and the bouncing of the suspension that I mentioned earlier.
Oh, this is cool. Nice long kind of a waterfall thing going on here. Just some nice hard rock. If you get any speed going, you'll get a little bouncy on it. But there's doesn't seem to be any lack of traction, even though it's got a lot of, of the sand dusted on it. And then when we come around, we're just gonna drop right down the middle of it. It seems like it's gonna drop off on both sides. But not by much. Oh yeah, we're just rolling right through it. Not even an issue. Straight into the set. But it is going to be uh, apparent that we will probably see a number of tour vehicles through here. I mean, I can see why. This would be, you know, a beautiful spot for it. We see some animal tracks. And now we're into some deep sand. Definitely gonna go slow over these blind hills because of the, the tour vehicles. Was it that one too? Mm -hmm. Okay, we got this little rock ledge. We're gonna drop down. 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23 degrees. Nice little angle. Gotta love some of those. Gotta get some angle once in a while. And we'll see what this one has in store. Okay, right here at the 1.9 mile mark is the Eye of the Whale, uh, Eye of Whale Trailhead. And now we are going to come back and do this. So uh, we're gonna continue on this road till it ends. Then we're gonna turn around and on the way out, instead of going back the way we came, we're gonna make a right here and go on that trail. But we'll get back to that Right now, it's time to continue and uh, see what else this trail has in store for us. We are coming up on what's called the maze and sand area where we're gonna weave through the red rock and sand. And that was a fun little jaunt to get over here as you go through some nice soft sand. And I love driving through soft sand. It just feels so floaty and you kind of, you know, you're, it, it's the best way to describe it. It's kind of floaty left and right and stuff, and it, it's a lot of fun. But right here we have these, <laughs> I was going to say sand sculptures, but they're sculpted by Mother Nature, but very cool to drive through this, this area. Just follow the signs and the road. Don't go where you're not supposed to go. Oh, look at this little climb here. Okay, this should be a little fun. Well, that was a fun little spot. And we're still working our way around. We still got a ways to go um, to get to the end, so. Looks like we got some more little rock formation things to go through here in a couple minutes. I'm sure the wide angle view on the Osmo Action camera here is not doing this scenery much in the way of justice with just how big and magnificent this stuff in front of us is. And right dead in front of us is Tower Arch. It's there at the bottom underneath that uh, pillar right the, the biggest pillar right in front of us if you look straight down you'll see tower arch but we're gonna get closer so uh, look forward to getting some some even better shots of that
Okay, we have turned around and we're heading back down the road that we came in on. Katarina went for a nice little hike right up to the arches. I would say round trip took around 40 minutes or so. What'd you think of that? It was amazing and it's much more short. I just took my sweet time to make pictures. <laughs> and there is more than one arch there, right? There is two arches. Tower arch and parallel arch. Tower arch and parallel? Yeah. Is that the other one? Parallel yeah. arch? Yeah. Okay. And the roughest spot is just getting down those first rocks? No, it's like a walk. Just... Just takes a while. It's okay. And you should wear a hat and you should take water because it's kind of hot out here. I mean, right now it's, it's 76 degrees, but it's very, very dry and that sun beating on you uh that can wear you out pretty quick now mountain lions have been seen in the area uh so i don't know how big of a concern that is but one of the tour guides that was there with the group was telling us that he had seen a mountain lion there a week ago and didn't take his group down so it's just uh something to, to take note of Rattlesnakes too. Rattlesnakes, I bet. Yes. Yep. Don't play with rattlesnakes. That's usually bad. And scorpions. Did you see any? The people say they saw scorpions just a few minutes ago. Oh, people that were there saw them? Yeah. Maybe it was a lizard. <laughs> it could have, could have been a lizard. I saw a lizard. <laughs> But now we get to have some fun going back on some of these same obstacles in the opposite direction. Whoop. Uh, and then when we get back to that intersection that we talked about earlier, we're going to take a right and head down another path. We are back to the intersection that I mentioned before. If you see this sign here, it says Tower Arch is 1.3 miles behind us, Salt Valley Road is 1.8 miles ahead of us and to the right it says four-wheel drive road now this is where this can be tricky if you're trying to use multiple uh, sources for information because the fun treks book says that this road to our right is still called tower arch and the trails off road app says this is eye of the whale so two different things for the same trail. So I don't know which one's right, but just for the sake of argument, we're gonna to refer to it as Eye of the Whale because that's what the Trails Off Road app says and that's where we're heading. So this is going to take us to Eye of the Whale Arch. So hence, we will refer to this trail as Eye of the Whale, just for clarification and for keeping things straight. So we're gonna turn on the road here and see what lies ahead here we're starting off with some sand boy do i love sand <laughs> i love the sand maybe we should go somewhere where we can drive on the beach so i can try and drive on the sand looks like there's a lot of sand okay <laughs> well we'll just have to see how fun this section of trail gets Okay, most of this has been some really nice soft sand with a few little rocky outcrops like this that you really need to slow down on just to keep yourself from rattling to death. But a good chunk of it is soft sand. Now we've got like these little rock ledges here. None of this is going to present any problem for a pretty stock vehicle. There's a few sections on that last road that are going to require um, picking some good lines. Otherwise, clearance may be an issue. And here we've just got this little rock climb. Now, Trails Off Road calls this a small V, but 
I don't see any V left here anymore. But we'll get up and over it. It looked like there really was only one line on there uh, right now. But like a lot of areas around here, weather every year can change the trails dramatically. Uh, I mean, it took White Rim from being an easy trail to an extremely difficult trail. And it can turn others from being really difficult trails into being easy. It just depends on where it washes the sand around and how things get shifted from year to year. Okay, we're gonna start this little climb here. Just a tiny bit of gas, just crawling right up it. Again, I like these obstacles. They're just kinda, they're fun. They're not too, too hard, but they're not like super easy dirt roads either. I think it's a great combination, especially for someone that's new who wants to get some experience, but don't come out here alone uh, for your first time. That's not a good idea. We ran into a couple that literally was lost out here and didn't know how to get out and they were starting to get a little panicked. So we pointed them in the right direction and got them on their way. Okay, I'm gonna try and make this look more dramatic since Katarina is out there filming. I just don't know that it's going to look as dramatic as I'd like. Give it a little goose getting it up on over. Okay, this is called Blind Turn, and it's not supposed to be anything difficult here, but it can look a little bit intimidating at first glance because you just have this rock in front of you, and you have to go up and over it. And then work your way down So it helps to have a spotter sometimes. I didn't go look, I just had Katarina go up to take a look at it and she walked me right through it. Not a big deal. And now we're kind of down in this wash area. Well, this is a very cool section of trail here. I love when you get to drive right up to these big rock formations. That is just super cool. Just adds an extra little element to the experience. Now, some of this, especially some of the stuff we're coming up on, has some pretty deep sand. And sand can be a real problem. If there has been any amount of weather, any rain or snow, that sand can get you stuck very, very quickly. So you wanna make sure that you're coming out on a very dry day. Well, this is a very dry day, so we shouldn't have any problems. But at the same time, if there's a thick patch because of recent weather, you can easily get stuck in that just because sand is kind of sticky and soft. So 
this is one of those times where even if the you don't air down for comfort you should be aired down to give your tires more flotation on the sand it's because of you have a bigger contact patch so you're going to stay on top of the sand better this is also why nice narrow street tires not a good idea off-road you want some some thicker meat so that you can stay on top of the surface and on sand that is really important wind blowing that is well the wind can definitely shift where the sand is and that can be a major problem if it puts this deposits it in a nasty area well, you can get stuck real fast see even right here right next to us on the road the sand is nice and wet if you tried to drive through that that would rut you really good now it might be not it might not be thick enough to get you stuck but it just shows that even on a day like today where it's almost 80 degrees and it's seemingly really dry out here there are spots where there's a lot of moisture and if you're not on your toes you can end up in some really sticky stuff okay i think i'm going to call this a driver's choice here looks like you could go over to the right and have a little easier go of it we're going to stay to the left and just go over the rocks here now this is kind of a little v formation so i'm going to put the tires on either side of the v so i have plenty of clearance for the differential walk it down the edge of the rock there and we're good to go after you get past some of those obstacles there then you have a fairly long stretch and if i remember right this was about six miles of just this open desert area so i mean it's beautiful and it's fun and there's you know some nice sand patches like we've been seeing before as well as some of these little rocky outcrops that we run across but there's not much in the way of what i would call obstacles so we do have quite a bit of a drive here before we get to the next point of interest okay we've got this steep sandy hill at the six mile mark so what I'm going to do is I'm going to creep up on it and then as soon as we feel ourselves start going up I'm going to give it a little gas and make sure we have enough to really crawl up this thing. Oh, no problem at all. Okay, I was expecting it to be a little looser than it was, but that was no issue. I will definitely say that this road has some areas that are relatively tippy. 20 degrees, are you kidding me? 21. I mean, so if this is where, I, I told you earlier about this couple that was coming out of this, if they had come through here with no experience, I understand why she was uh, pale as a ghost there, because that's pretty crazy. Now. What you don't really see is that level of tippiness on the camera because it's stabilizing. But I'll show you, uh, I'll put some lines on the screen there so you can see the next time we get into one of these areas, just how tippy that actually looks. Okay, we have got this little climb here. And then as we come out of this turn, off to our right let me see if we get better position here oh yeah, yeah there's a little scenic things. viewpoint right here i should be able to get turned and there we are pointing right at eye of the whale arch now if you don't see it look where that big formation drops down and then look directly underneath that and you'll see a whale eye shaped arch or a ufo shaped arch depending on how you look at it but that is directly in front of us right there
green bushes. Are Just there. follow the green bushes right up to the arch. Follow the dip in the hill right down to the arch. It's right there. Very cool. Uh, you can hike right over to it. There's a short little hike that starts here at this little parking lot if you want to go over there and see it up close and personal. As we leave that parking lot for Eye of the Whale Arch, we're going to be right about the 8.8 .8 mile mark and the trail is going to end at the 11 mile mark. So we only have just over two miles to go to finish this trail. Okay, we're getting close to the end here, maybe about a mile left. And we got this little stair step going down. We'll just take that nice and easy. And then we got these little whoopies right here. We'll get probably a little bouncy on that. And then it straightens out onto this flatter surface. Okay, so we've just come out of the trail and you can make a left or a right hand turn here. If you go left, you're very close to getting to the paved road. If you make a right, which is gonna take us, it says Willow Springs 2.7 miles. And basically out of the park and that's where we're heading so we want to go we're gonna go right stay on Willow Springs see some more sites and uh, kind of wrap up our day versus jumping right on the pavement and heading out so let's go see what Willow Springs has in store for us and we are making our way through this Willow Springs area and we've got some different types of formations here um, I am not an expert geologist, but these look more like sandstone than some of the other stuff that we've been seeing today. Some pretty cool little features along the way. And then you'll have a stretch of desert and then something else and then a stretch of desert and something else. It's really a, an interesting uh, set of trails here inside of Arches National Park. Oh, that's just a little hill up and over. You see such a wide variety of terrain in such a small area. And you can be in here for hours. Um, do you remember what time we got into the park? About nine o'clock? Yeah. So yeah, it was probably about nine o'clock that we got into the park and it's like 2.45 now, and we're still not done. So it is a good day of wheeling here inside the park. So if you want something that's a little bit different, check it out. I, I'm very happy that we made the decision to see what this stuff was all about here. As you get to the end, you'll find this gate. And this is the exit of Arches National Park. And then you're back out in public land. And a little bit further, and you'll be back on the street just north of the Arches National Park main entrance. So thanks for watching, everybody. We really appreciate it. If you know of any national parks or state parks that have off-road trails, we'd really like to know about them because this was super fun. We did Arches and we did Canyonlands National Park on this trip. Super, super fun. So if you know of any, let us know. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay safe out there. We'll see you on the trail.